resolution on this debate and it's been signed by six political groups. That takes us on to the next item on our agenda which is a statement by the uh, Vice President of the Commission, the High Representative of the Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy on the tensions between Turkey and the Republic of Cyprus. So I would once again like to invite the uh, Vice President of the Commission and High Representative of the Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy to take the floor. Vice President. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, Honourable Members will have noticed that I've moved. Um, that's because um, of the way we wish to, uh, this uh, discussion. Um, I want to begin by saying that one thing that's very obvious to me uh, is that we are seeing a much more proactive uh, Turkey in terms of its foreign policy and that if one is looking at what some of the issues around the uh, position of Turkey in the Arab world, there is much we could spend time discussing. I'm particularly, of course, talking of the issues around the uh, flotilla dispute with Israel a situation that is a real source of friction and which spills over into other aspects of foreign policy and relations. Uh, Madam President, Turkey is both a candidate and a NATO member. Um, it's a course in our interest to try and seek to calm tension and to, from my perspective, bind Turkey into the delivery of our foreign policy objectives. I spend time talking with uh, Foreign Minister David Toglu on a whole range of issues, but it will surprise no one in this House that the issue that he and I spoke about when we met bilaterally at the United Nations was the issue that is before us uh, this evening. I, of course, work closely with the Foreign Minister of Cyprus, uh, who is uh, new to our deliberations on the Foreign Affairs Council, but follows in the footsteps of her predecessor. And we are well aware that the current tensions over the, the drilling issue concern us because they involve to a candidate country. My services have been and continue to work very closely with Stefula. And because of the nature of this debate, I'm now going to hand over to Stefan to continue from this side of the House. Yes, on behalf of the Commission, I would like to uh, invite Commissioner Fula now to take the floor. Uh, Madam President, uh, distinguished members uh, of the European Parliament, uh, as soon as tensions appeared over this issue, we have been following developments uh, very closely and with increased, uh, increasing concern. The High Representative and I made it very clear right from the start Threats are not an option when it comes to solve problems uh, between neighbours. Disputes need to be settled by peaceful means. This is a guiding principle in international relations and in the European Union. And Cathy made that point a couple of times during uh, the afternoon's uh, the debates. We regret and refuse any statement or action that run counter to this approach. Moreover, as the Council has stressed on several occasions, our member states have the sovereign right to conclude bilateral agreements with third countries in accordance with the European Union acquis and international law, including the United Nations Conventions on the Law of the Sea. Let me recall that under international law, the European Union and its member states only recognize the Republic of Cyprus on the island. The European Union has also repeatedly underlined the importance of progress in the normalization of relations between Turkey and all European Union member states, including the Republic of Cyprus. I firmly believe that Turkey and the European Union have much more to gain through integration and dialogue than through tensions, especially at a time where the stakes in the region following the Arab Spring are so high.
Turkey and the European Union need to support jointly the aspirations of the people on the southern flank of the Mediterranean for democracy, human rights, stability and prosperity. The European Union is based on a number of core principles and values, including good neighbourly relations and the peaceful settlement of disputes, resorting, if necessary, to international arbitration. We are and remain committed to this approach, which is the best guarantee for peace and stability. Be assured that both High Representative Catherine Ashton and I made all these points very clearly in our recent contacts with all our ladies and gentlemen at the beginning of July. The United Nations Secretary General met the Greek Cypriot and Turkish Cypriot leaders in Geneva. They decided to enter into an intensive period of negotiations towards a comprehensive settlement. Since then, we have all been looking forward to a crucial phase of settlement talks in autumn and the resolution of an issue that would be to the benefit of all Cypriot citizens, the European Union, Turkey and the entire region. This phase is ongoing and I understand the leaders are intensively discussing the substance of several core pending issues. There is a chance not to be missed under any circumstances. I therefore urge all parties now to focus all energy, efforts and minds on the comprehensive settlement. During this crucial ongoing phase, it is essential that all parties concerned exercise restraint and do their utmost to ensure a positive climate that will facilitate a successful completion of the process. Let us give the settlement talks the best chance to succeed. I trust that all European Union institutions, including the European Parliament, will send the same messages and encouragement towards this end to all the parties concerned. I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much indeed, Commissioner. Now we move on to the speakers on behalf of the political groups. I would like to start by giving the floor to Mr. Komut Sako on behalf of the EPP for one and a half minutes. Thank you, Madam President. High Representative Commissioner, we are talking uh, about uh, crisis uh, and uh, this is something, I think, it, which is uh, constant in Turkey's uh, foreign policy. And uh, this is always seen when matters are not in line with their geopolitical uh, questions. Independent of uh, whether or not these are in line with international law and whether they're acceptable, that's why we've seen an escalation in action and the uh, threat of uh, Turkey against the uh, justified uh, demand of the Republic of Cyprus to carry out exploratory drilling. Obviously, I think that uh, this supports the energy security of the European Union if uh, they look into these energy deposits there. And there will be additional benefits both for the Greek and the Turkish Cypriots. That should be a major incentive in, to move towards further progress in solving the uh, Cypriot crisis. Obviously, um, the, uh, we can't see rights being undermined as a result of uh, the illegal occupation of certain areas of the uh, Greek island. We are seeing that uh, there is tensions now because uh, a country is trying to uh, establish itself as uh, one of the stronger countries in the uh, Middle East region. But we're seeing this uh, tension now. Turkey is literally playing with fire. Security consumer than a security provider in the Eastern Mediterranean. High Representative Commissioner, the European Union, I think, has to send out a very clear message against the Turkish threats and so solidarity towards our partners, the Republic of Cyprus. 
apply for us. It's a question of a dignity and credibility for the union itself. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Komutsakis. Mr. Hannes Svoboda, on behalf of uh, the S&D, for one and a half minutes. Thank you, Madam President. We, in the Social Democrats, want to see a strong role played by Turkey, particularly in the region of the Eastern Mediterranean. We want to be a partner to Turkey. We want Turkey as a partner, but a partner has to work in a partnership type of way, and it's not doing that at the moment. The Foreign Minister, Mr. Davutoglu, said it wanted to take part in policy without any conflict with its neighbours. Unfortunately, though, we're seeing more and more conflicts between Turkey and its neighbours. Think about Cyprus, for example. And that's not acceptable as far as we're concerned. I that Cyprus is a member of the European Union. And we want to show full solidarity with that member. And if, the t if Turkey is wanting to send out warships uh, by way of threat and to undermine this, well, then there's a problem. Turkey is saying that we're not going to talk about the talk to Cyprus if it takes over the rotating presidency. That's not acceptable. These are policies that don't just go against the uh, Cypriot population, but also the Turkish population. It's a policy that will make it more and more difficult to reach agreement on uh, Cyprus. But we want unification of that country and the population. We want cooperation between both parts of the island. And we stand by the fact that we've got to see movement here. We want negotiations. But Turkey has got to act in a partnership type of way to foster that partnership. Full solidarity is what we want to show to our colleagues in Cyprus and the population in Cyprus. That's totally right and I'm asking Turkey to accept this. It's a full member uh, of, uh, of the European Union and deserves our full solidarity. It needs to realize that once and for all. Thank you very much. On behalf of the uh, Liberals group, Mrs. Saka for two minutes. Thank you Madam President, Madam High Representative and Commissioner Fule. As you are aware, Turkey's foreign policy is guided by a doctrine called zero problems with neighbors. But unfortunately today, Turkey is experiencing problems with almost its neighboring countries. The mounting tensions with Cyprus are of special concern to this House, and the Commission has rightfully urged both sides, the Greek Cypriots as well, to show restraint. Turkey's role in the region is important and could be a great vehicle for more intense cooperation between Turkey and the EU. I hope you will find active support from Turkey in your efforts to find a negotiated solution to the Middle East conflict. And I hope that you will see closer cooperation with Turkey to end the ongoing hell that we see in Syria. However, EU-Turkey relations are form formally predominantly about domestic affairs and reforms, the Copenhagen criteria. A focus on foreign affairs and Turkey's important role in the region does not compensate nor replace the relevance of making reforms to meet these criteria. Similarly, Turkey's economy is doing better than all of its neighbors, it seems, with truly remarkable figures. Yet, <clears throat> economic success cannot replace good governance, respect for civil rights and a functioning rule of law. A press release I recently received from the Turkish government aimed to explain that rule of law is not violated in Turkey, but accepted that there are approximately 70 journalists in prison. Official charges are not always presented and pre-trial detention periods can last years. And to make matters worse, indictments that are presented are often supported by something called, quote, secret evidence, end of quote, which makes a transparent judicial process impossible. The Turkish government asserted that these journalists are in prison on terrorism charges and that those of us believing press freedom is under pressure are wrong. This House, the Commission and the External Action Service have assessed the press freedom issue in Turkey with great concern. Does the High Representative and the Commissioner agree that it is time to broaden the scope and to assess whether counter-terrorism laws might be abused and whether the rule of law is still functioning in line with the Copenhagen criteria so that we can move towards the much needed accession of Turkey to the EU. Thank you. On behalf of ECR, Mr. Karim for one minute. Madam Vice President, can I firstly welcome you to this side of the House? I'm right behind you over here. It's always good to see you and can I welcome your 
uh, commitment to this House both on a, a, an individual and a collective uh, basis. This is, of course, a very sensitive issue uh, that we're dealing with at a very sensitive time. Can I firstly say my support for Commissioner Fuller's statements and calls for restraint from all involved? As we move towards a crucial phase in the Cyprus reunification talks, it is essential that we encourage all sides to roll back from their respective positions. Commissioner Fuller, what are we doing to encourage Cyprus to stop the exploration whilst we await the reunification talks? As a member state, it owes a duty to this union not to push when we ask for time. It's not a question of sovereignty. We've established that clearly already. It's simply providers with time and space for the betterment of our union and our joint interest. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. On behalf of the Greens, Mrs. Flautre for one and a half minutes. Thank you, Madam President. I'm not displeased in, with this debate because ultimately it's been a long time since we talked about this situation, the situation in Cyprus and the problems between Turkey and Cyprus. It's been a long time. It's the first time we've been talking about this openly for quite some time. And on this territory of, the, of one of our member states, we've had the UN uh, mission to try and establish the peace in this uh, country. It's quite grotesque, really. And it strikes you immediately how grotesque it is. Now, Cyprus has got to respect its, its uh, sovereignty. Is that a question? Yes, it has respected its sovereignty. The international law says it is able to carry out this exploration which is within the rights of its sovereignty. However, the benefits of that exploration need to be divided equally between the two communities. That's something that we should uh, condemn if that doesn't happen. And also the timing of this. This decision harms the negotiations that are forthcoming in the next few days. That is something that we need to condemn. These talks that are going to take place under the auspices of the UN. So it's important to realize that. We don't want to up the ante, but it's important to find a global, a global peace. We want to have a federal, uh, bi-zonal situation. We know all about the agreements that we're talking about. All of this is on the table already. The question is, that we need to ask is, what are the member states doing? What is the European Union doing to help forward this uh, an achievement of this agreement and to help all the people concerned to be constructive. I sometimes get the feeling, quite the reverse, that the question of Cyprus is, is simply left aside, swept under the carpet and it's simply brought out whenever it's useful. And when we're talking about Turkey's um, accession or not. So what we need to do is to try and in endorse efforts to get a, 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 a profoundly European solution to this. Thank you, Thank you very much indeed, Mrs. Flautre. Mrs. Zavella, you've raised the blue card, but the speakers already, uh, had already finished. Now, given the floor to the following one, you will have an opportunity uh, to uh, say what you wanted because you are on the speaker's list. I would now like to ask Mr. Trianda Filivis from uh, GUI to take the floor for one and a half minutes. The Republic of Cyprus, acting according to international law and after signing agreements with its neighboring countries, has initiated an official exploration within its exclu exclusive economic zone for hydrocarbonates. Turkey has never accepted this legitimate fact. In 2008, Turkish warships repeatedly harassed the vessels conducting oceanographic research in Cyprus's exclusive economic zone. In light of the drilling process, Turkey at the highest governmental level has repeatedly threatened Cyprus, demanding of it to abandon its lawful rights. The threats are becoming facts. Warships have been dispatched and a so-called agreement with the occupied part of Cyprus for exploring the exclusive, the exclusive economic zone of Cyprus concluded. The UN Convention on the Law of the Sea was ratified by the European Union and is thus a part of the acquis 
which Turkey's all European Union candidate, candidate countries is expected to respect and be bound by. Instead, it chooses to ignore it. Turkey is undermining sovereign rights of an EU member state and community law. It is escalating its unilateral action, jeopardizing the peace process for the solution of the Cyprus problem and endangering stability in the Mediterranean Sea. My group strongly believes that any further instability in the region would be to the detriment of the people of the region and of the EU itself. The EU must send Turkey a very clear and strong message that its action is violating international and European law and it has to stop. This behavior is unacceptable. They are ready to Cyprus and we call upon you and Council to demonstrate it in a very, in a very clear manner. Well, I'd now like to uh, invite uh, Mrs. Zavella to take the floor for two minutes. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Madam President. Ladies and uh, gentlemen, Mrs. Ashton, Commissioner, I'm really afraid that uh, Europe I don't know where it's going we're here and, and we're hearing that uh, we have to uh, ask for restraint from both parties why from both parties the Republic of Cyprus in full compliance with international law is exploring in its own economic zone so why and uh, Mrs. Karim, if I understood this, said that they had to stop this. Now, is it possible? It's their economic zone there, so why shouldn't they explore? You know, are we condemning both the uh, victim and the one who's created the problem in the first place? Because that's what's apparently happening with the Republic of Cyprus right now. We're saying that both parties have to show self-restraint, and that means that all of us here are not respecting international law nor the sovereign national rights and the constitutional rights of, uh, and the duties of the EU vis-a-vis -vis Cyprus and that is completely unacceptable. I think we have to stand firmly in, in uh, support of our position which respects international law. I have a second point to make. Bismarck said that the only stable parameters in foreign policy um, boil down to geography. Mrs. Ashton, we do have ge geographical borders, I think, don't we, in terms of the European Union. And since we do have those, you represent foreign policy a single foreign policy on behalf of the European Union. So I think we should be aware of where those geographical borders lie. Geographically speaking, what is Europe? Do we know what it is? And if so, well, then we have to defend it. Let's take this one step further. When they find these deposits, these gas deposits in uh, Cyprus, who is going to benefit, benefit from that? It's going to be the European market. So should we not be defending European interest in European products. Thank you. Mrs. Uh, Vetman from the uh, non-attached. Yeah, Thank you very much, President, Commissioner, High Representative, colleagues. It's an independent state, member of the EU and the UN, and therefore has the right to independently determine its interests alone or in cooperation with other countries in accordance with international laws. Cyprus has signed and ratified the UN Conventions of the Law of the Sea, just like 161 other countries. Therefore, the offshore oil and gas drilling in Cyprus's own exclusive economic zone and its continental shelf are within the laws. Turkey has to accept to comply, to have to comply within international laws. We, the EU, have to stand up and speak clearly and with one voice and under no circumstances can we tolerate any further violation of EU borders. What do we have international laws and UN conventions for if they are not respected? Thank you. I 
would now like to ask Mrs. Oman Wrighton to take the floor for two minutes. And up till now, the European Commission judged the tensions and the potential conflict between Turkey and Cyprus as a bilateral conflict. I disagree. The conflict is between a EU member state and a country that is accepted as a candidate of the EU club. President, and therefore, the European Commission can't be silent. The foreseen exploration is in the exclusive economic zone of Cyprus. It extends to the south of the island and in no way limits exploitation of the northern part or the rights of Turkey. It's for me crystal clear that these rights follow from the UNCLOS Treaty, where economic zones are described followed by bilateral agreements. The fact that Turkey didn't sign UNCLOS doesn't mean that they refuse it, because in the, in the 80s already, Turkey declared an exclusive, exclusive economic zone in the Black Sea, and its region agreement with Romania, with Bulgaria and the former Soviet Union. And then they used the same method of the Mendian line. Therefore, President, I really urge Turkey to refrain from all threats. And there's also a question which I have to the government of Cyprus. I would ask them to be willing to reassure that the move towards the exploration and the possible exploitation of natural gas and oil reserves in the exclusive economic zone will not in any way impinge on the possibility of an agreement between the two Cypriot communities on the reunification. And that this will prove to be the benefit for both communities. And I think that this should be done or could be done, for instance, by pledging to earmark reserves or some of the reserves of the future re revenues for the benefit of the whole Cypriot community. Once reunification is achieved, and also by pledging to provide electricity powered by natural gas to northern Cyprus. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Mr. Ruček for one and a half minutes. Thank you very much, Madam President, Baroness Ashton, Commissioner, colleagues. I'd like to say a few words about these escalating tensions between Cyprus and Turkey as a coordinator for relations with the Turkish and Greek Cypriot communities. As Mr. Fuller said, for two years now, negotiations have been underway, but have not really achieved very much to date on the, situ on the question of reunification of the island. These negotiations are beginning to enter into their final phase now so there's a lot at stake so either we're going to establish a global satisfactory solution to these long-term problems or given all the changes in the Middle East as well there will be a permanent division of the island with fatal consequences for the Greek and Turkish Cypriots and so that's why I would like to urge the leaders of both communities to concentrate on these negotiations with a view to finalizing them and making sure that they're successful don't allow the tensions to escalate any further because after all that's not in the interests of either community both communities should be able to decide on the future of their own country, including their natural resources. Mr. Skilakakis, two minutes. President uh, High Representative Commissioner, at a time when the EU, under the pressure from the crisis, is asking us to move towards uh, uh, closer economic and financial integration, the uh, marine wealth in areas 
which uh, belong to a uh, member state under international law are a matter for all of us. It refers to our energy future and energy security in the Union. Now, uh, unfairness cannot create rights. The fact that uh, there are deposits underneath uh, the Sea of Cyprus doesn't mean that uh, they have rights over the Cypriot EEZ, independent of the geographical period, particularly when we're all aware of the fact that the Republic of uh, Cyprus has correctly complied with international law. And we're all aware of the fact that it's going to take a very long time, decades, in order for the, uh, the benefits of the current exploration to trickle down through into the whole of Cyprus. We need to find a solution and we may have found in that time for uh, uh, an issue which comes back from uh, over many years now and uh, so that we can ensure that all of the citizens of Cyprus can benefit from this exploration independent of their ethnical background. This is the 21st century and Turkey is wrong if it believes that uh, this uh, um, gun-toting democracy can uh, undermine the clout of an EU member state. And to conclude on the negotiations, I must say that these negotiations on Cyprus have been ongoing for 30 years. If we'd followed the logic that the Republic of uh, Cyprus has uh, uh, reduced sovereign rights in the course of these uh, negotiations, well, I think it will be a case of actually having removed those sovereign rights from the Republic of Cyprus. It's wrong for us to say that. I think that we have to find the solution elsewhere. And the solution lies in logically, correctly implementing international law and uh, looking for the solution to the Cypriot issue along those lines. Thank you very much indeed, Mrs. Papadopoulou. You're uh, on the line already, so uh, on the list already. So. Uh, You've shown the blue card, but uh, I think you can have some extra time at a later stage to make the comments you wanted to make. Now, Mrs. Bisotto, for one minute. I do apologize. We have Mr. Meyer first, for one minute. Thank you very much indeed, Madam President. Mrs. Ashton, uh, Commissioner. Allow me to remind Commissioner Fully, first and foremost, that uh, Turkey doesn't uh, accept arbitration, does it, it doesn't recognize the Hague Court, it doesn't uh, accept international arbitration, it is instead threatening an EU member state. We're not talking about tension between two countries, but rather Turkey's threats on Cyprus uh, have uh, also swung in with the move of t movement of Turkish vessels. And Turkish threats against one member state are threats against the entire EU. I think it's escalating tension in the whole region and Turkey's uh, action is completely intolerable. Uh, on the other hand, the government of the Republic of Cyprus is pulling out all the stops to establish a lasting, viable, peaceful solution to the Cypriot issue. I would like to uh, mention what was said by the President of Cyprus, Mr. Uh, Dimitris Christofoulos, the President of Cyprus in the UN. He said that the exploration potential for oil in the exclusive economic zone belonging to the Republic of Cyprus will be a benefit both to the Greek Cypriot and to the Turkish uh, Cypriot community. And the European Council, in terms of the, uh, the uh, accession conditions for Turkey said that uh, they would have to sign the uh, Convention on, uh, on uh, Maritime Law, which they haven't done yet. Thank you very much indeed, Mrs. Bisotto, for one, year, one minute. There are people who will not, uh, are not unable to exercise their faith and priests are killed there and we, this is what we see in Turkey. We uh, from the northern Italy have been against this because we think that uh, this is the Trojan horse uh, and their, it's their entry in, in our continent and I think that is why we should have the final word when we're talking about adhesion. When we look at the situation vis-a-vis -vis Europe, we must give an immediate answer. We cannot accept that a third a country tells Europe what to do. Cyprus is a full member of the EU and it is about to assume the presidency 
we would give a clear signal we must defend Cy Cyprus mm. uh, against the political and military arrogance of Turkey we must immediately uh, start uh, suspend negotiations and we must suspend uh, trade negotiations uh, relations as well Mrs. Ashton, with all due respect, the uh, policy which has been put to us this evening, without recognizing the aggressiveness and unfair behavior of one of the two parties here, I don't think uh, complies with the system of values that uh, you have agreed and are required to protect. Mr. Fuller. Well, why are you saying that Republic of Cyprus has to uh, uh, show restraint? You should be asking Turkey to do that, Mr. Fuller. What are you expecting Cyprus to do? Everything it has done has been done in respect of uh, international law, as is done by all member states uh, around the world. Cyprus is the, the, the Republic of Cyprus is the only recognized state on the island of Cyprus. And that's why, Mrs. Ashton, if there is escalation of this, uh, this uh, crisis, then it will be on your shoulders and that of the Commission. Instead of uh, bearing in mind the, the risks faced by Cyprus right now, and stability in the uh, Middle East as well, and the whole system of values that we are here to defend, you are adopting a neutral stance. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Mr. Mavronikolas for one and a half minutes. Well, to begin with, I would like to support what has just been said by Mr. Hannes Svoboda about this crisis. I will pick up on certain points which haven't been mentioned by previous speakers. First and foremost, this crisis doesn't refer to Turkey and the European, uh, sorry, the Turkey and Cyprus. It's a question of Turkey and the European Union. The eastern borders of the European Union are at stake here. And it's a fact, it's well known that in attempting to extend and exploit its own exclusive economic zone, Turkey is bringing into question the possibility of uh, Greek islands, Castellorisso in particular, and all of the islands uh, around that area, to, uh, to challenge their own right to an EEZ. So in striving to uh, create tension, Turkey, I, I think, is also trying to uh, uh, extend its own EEZ. It hasn't signed up to the, uh, the uh, law of the sea, as has done been the member states by the European Union. And it's also trying to uh, extend powers over the islands in the eastern Mediterranean. As for where this exploration is coming about, it's in the very southern extreme of Cyprus's EEZ. Over and above that, Turkey is connecting, is associating this uh, event now with the question of uh, Cyprus's presidency, with negotiations and with uh, a lack of recognition for the Republic of Cyprus. The presence of uh, the Turkish naval forces in this area, which uh, unfortunately, uh, well, they've got other states trying to... Uh, become involved here as well. We've heard that there's been American aeroplanes from Sicily which have been uh, monitoring um, Turkish submarines, submarines and the Israelis have been doing that as well. But as far as we're concerned, unfortunately, the EU action has been very limited. Mrs. Ashton. When are we going to have a genuinely uh, single foreign affairs uh, policy from the EU? We have a very long way to go before we achieve that. And I think that we all have to pull together in the meantime to find a solution to this uh, event. We've uh, overrun town by a very long way, so I'm going to be very uh, strict on timing. I would invite Mr. Watson to take the floor for one and a half minutes. And the musical chairs at the front of the... Uh uh, whole, the beginning of this uh, and the lack of any real statement from uh, either of the representatives uh, is perhaps at least a recognition that exclusive economic zones are not a matter of EU competence, they are a matter of international law. 
Quite apart from the dubious wisdom of drilling for hydrocarbons on a planet whose temperature is increasing far too fast and in countries which have huge resources of renewable energy, this is a challenge the European Union cannot ignore. We are in this situation partly because we failed to insist on a peace deal prior to Cyprus's entry to the Union and partly because since entry little progress has been made on a solution for the island and the Union has gone cold on Turkey's adhesion. I note the speech of Cyprus's new energy minister, Praxula Antoniadou Keriakou, at the Energy Council last week. And I welcome her commitment to the opening of the energy chapter for Turkey, which Cyprus blocked in 2007. But I note, too, that exploratory drilling has begun. Knowing Turkey's objections and knowing its offer of the 24th of September for a UN mediator on hydrocarbon resources, aware that drilling will be seen as more than an economic activity and at a time when UN negotiations are entering a very delicate phase. What Cyprus is doing may be defensible legally, but it's bound to be inflammatory politically, and we should not be surprised at Turkey's reaction. Now, of course, we must urge Turkey to show restraint, but we must also give some hope to the Turkish Cypriots that they might have a share in the wealth of an estimated 20 billion barrels of oil. Mr. Watson, Mr. Komotsakos has raised a blue card. He'd like to put a question to you. Can you I take the question? Mr. Komotsakos, you have half a minute. Mr. Watson, I listened very carefully to what you were saying, and uh, it's clear that we're going to, mis to disagree on a lot of things, but I do have a question for you. Are there Turkish threats uh, which go under, uh, against international law in this case? And if there are, then what can the EU do about it? The EU, of course, has a duty to defend its member states. And of course what Turkey is doing is wrong under international law. What I, my point is, is that we should not be surprised at Turkey's reaction. And I agree with the very wise comment made by Mrs. Oman Reuten earlier in this debate. If we really want to find a solution, then it has to be a solution that gives all Cypriots a chance of sharing in the wealth that will be generated from such drilling. I would now like to ask Mr. Kasoulidis to take the floor for one minute. Thank you. Madam President, the key for this debate is the United Nations Convention for the Law of the Sea. The law of the sea does not suit Turkey. To the detriment of all Cypriots, Greek Cypriots and Turkish Cypriots alike, Turkey is trying to serve her own interests and not the interests of the Cypriots, with threats and fait accompli devoid of any legal basis. It is the same Turkey that ignores the rules of the European Union. Yesterday it was the extension of the Ankara Protocol. Today threatens to freeze its relations with the EU during the Cypriot presidency. Turkey abides to no rule. I subscribe, Mr. Commissioner, to your call for a successful outcome of the talks for a settlement. But I urge you to study the statement of Mr. Erdogan in Cyprus, which leaves no room for Mr. Eroglu to have a conciliatory stance. The drilling will not affect the talks unless somebody is looking for an excuse. Turkey should not be encouraged, Mr. Watson, by saying that you are not surprised to behave like a bully. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kasulide. Mrs. Bosco, for one minute. Thank you, President. While the governments of the Republic of Cyprus and Turkey are busy with their moves in the eastern Mediterranean, Tur Turkish and Greek Cypriots are sitting and waiting on the sidelines. They have most to lose from this present situation. Our prior priority should be to ensure negotiations are carried out successfully to realize the reunification of Cyprus. 
However, it's extremely worrying that the tensions in the region have been raised just before the start of the next round of negotiations. Both the Republic of Cyprus and Turkey are responsible to do their utmost to establish a positive climate for negotiations to make sure a historic window of opportunity will not close down. The people of Cyprus need all parties involved to work together to reach a comprehensive settlement. The people of Cyprus, Greek and Turkish, who are all European citizens, deserve a stable future in the EU. It is about time that the European Union works for both of them. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Mrs. Papadopoulou. Madam President, well, I am against the Turkish threats against Cyprus. Uh, Ankara is convening international law and the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, which is part of the community a key. It didn't sign, it doesn't respect, and it is not implementing that convention. It's sending its military vessels into the eastern Mediterranean, creating tension. Illegally, it is trying to uh, create its own European, its econ exclusive economic zone around the uh, pseudo state. And uh, it doesn't recognize the Republic of Cyprus, which is a member of the EU and the United Nations, which has the sovereign right to explore and exploit its own natural resources. Turkey is acting as a terrorist state in the Eastern Mediterranean. And I would ask of the European Parliament, of the European Union, particularly of Baroness Ashton and Mr. Fuller, that they put an end to this uh, uh, cool policy it's applying and more specifically firstly that they shouldn't open any chapters particularly the one on energy secondly that they warn Turkey that uh, further escalation or further threats will mean an end to the accession route of Turkey and thirdly I would ask of Mrs. Orman that uh, she uh, talks about uh, the, her report today and uh, also say, mentions the threat of uh, Turkey and uh, should link this to the accession uh, point. Mr. Rutschek, if I can use the extra 10 seconds I said, you were talking about self-restraint from both parties. Now that means that you are keeping your distances and I think you're putting into the same basket both the victim and those who's creating the problem. I think you uh, are saying that uh, you're talking about the negotiations and uh, saying that uh, we're going to end up with uh, a complete split. Mr. Watson, why are you not denouncing Turkey when it is clearly convening the law of the sea? whereas uh, um, Turkey, where Cyprus is striving to actually implement the law of the sea. I would like some answers on that. The uh, debate is closed. We now moved on to the catch the eye process. Mrs. Coppa has the floor. Thank you very much indeed. I think this exploration is changing the uh, geopolitical balance in the Eastern Mediterranean. We have every reason as the European Union to uh, try and protect stability and to provide escalation of tension in what is a very sensitive region. Unfortunately, Turkey, which is uh, a candidate country for the EU, has chosen to go a different route and uh, it is uh, undermining the sovereign rights of uh, a member state, the rights according to international law as well, and it is threatening the use of military force. It's sending its own naval forces into international waters and is taking aggressive steps. I think that uh, there's a threat to the stability in the region and the route taken by uh, Mr. Erdogan is closing its eyes to Europe which is giving rise to major concerns throughout the uh, European continent and also in the United States. It's quite clear that anyone who invests in tension for its own national uh, uh, consumption is playing a very, very dangerous role. Turkey, with the steps it's made, taken and the statements it's made, is undermining peace and stability in the region. So we would ask Turkey to responsibly face up to uh, its responsibilities in what is a crucial period. Thank you very much indeed, Mrs. Koppa. Mr. Wikström, you've raised a blue card. You're on the list, Mr. Wikström, under the Catch the Eye procedure. Would you like to uh, ask a question? Mrs. Koppa, do you want to take that question? I wanted to ask for the floor. Okay. Now! Yes. 
Thank you very much indeed, Madam President. I think it's very sad to see, very sorry to see that the solidarity with Cyprus and our brothers and sisters in Cyprus is uh, a, an exception here. One particular member state is being attacked by foreign forces and I think we should emphasize the significance and importance of it and we see that the security of all of us in fact is threatened by Turkish ab aggression every single day. We must express the fact that we, it is un not acceptable that laws are not respected and each one of us should in fact defend our brothers and sisters in one of our member states. I would expect that if Sweden was attacked. But here we have la allowed this conflict to drag on forever. There must be put an end to this and that immediately. Mrs. Ashton, I uh, urge you to look at the aggression of Turkey and uh, we must do something now about it now. Thank you. Mr. Andrew Duff. President, um, I think we should uh, try to keep calm. Uh, I've got uh, two specific uh, questions. Uh, firstly, w uh, what is the uh, Council and uh, Commission planning to uh, do? Should the uh, UN uh, withdraw its g uh, good offices f from the uh, talks on the island? And secondly, oh, what precisely is your reaction to be to address the problem of the Turkish boycott of the, uh, the imminent uh, council presidency from July? Thank you. Thank you. The final speaker under Catch the Eye, Mr. Pasca. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, President, Commissioner, High Representative. The Republic of Cyprus is a member of the EU and therefore they act as they act. They act prudently. On the other hand, Turkey occupies a large area of the island, which is thus also the area uh, of the EU. So it's quite paradoxical that the EU is ready to start a discussion on the rights of the Turkey for exploration and drilling in the waters. I understand that the Turks would like to profit from this wealth in the waters of the EU, but the international law supports the claims of the Cyprus and uh, we should restrain this appetite of Turkey. The criticism of uh, Turkish threats will be also um, seen by our partners overseas. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. I would now like to invite the Commissioner, Mr. Fuller, to take the floor. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Madam President. Uh, uh, to start with, uh, be assured uh, of my understanding for your emotion uh, and your concern, although some of the statements uh, 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 were sort of going beyond uh, the line. Let me assure you, I mean, the last I, I checked the news, no one has been attacked. Uh, uh. Um, I think we can clearly say, uh, Madam President and honorable members, that we all agree that increased tensions in the Eastern Mediterranean are to nobody's interest. We can also agree that we stand by one of our member states when its rights are being brought into the question. Let me make a, a, a remark here, uh, because there was this question to what extent the Commission considers this uh, as a bilateral issue. What is bilateral is a disagreement on the delimita delimitation of borders, exclusive economic zone. What is not bilateral, and will never be, 
is an approach based on threats which violate the United Nations Charter. But uh, we also all acknowledge that the most important issue right now are the Cyprus settlement talks. The United Nations and the Secretary General, but in particular the leaders of the two communities, have invested enormous efforts to make them succeed. It is our responsibility and duty to support these efforts in any way we can. A united Cyprus would bring peace, stability and security within the European Union and in our close neighbourhood and in one of the most troubled regions in the world. It will also have a positive effect uh, on the relations between the European Union and Turkey. I am well aware that the European Union and Turkey are in a delicate phase uh, in their relations. The pace of the accession process is disappointing with no chapter opened since June 2010. The European Union is expecting more and faster reforms in Turkey to address urgent issues under fundamental rights and freedoms. Turkey, too, is frustrated by what it perceives as a lack of commitment of the European Union to negotiations. I believe the fresh tensions around the oil drilling issue partly results from this frustration. And let me make a, a couple of remarks up here reacting to uh, a very important debate and adding to a number of the statements I made at, at the beginning and also I made at, at, uh, during the questioned time we had earlier uh, 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 today in this House. I have no problem with assertive uh, foreign policy if that policy is responsible. I have a problem with irresponsible policy, a huge problem. And threatening a member state, uh, talking about the role of Navy, that's irresponsible and needs to be condemned and it will be. And it is con being condemned and it will be condemned. Another point. It has never been about any kind of doubts about the rights of one of us. No, no one. No one even has indicated I mean, that, that there could be a problem. No. The only point was timing. Okay? Most leaders made personal commitment to the Secretary General of the United Nations, that they will not be distracted by anything and that all their efforts will be focused on finding the comprehensive settlements and in such a way that the settlements is being found before Cyprus assumes the presidency of the European Council. And I agree with those who made the point that what is really of utmost importance to send at this point of the time the clear message that as far as the benefits of this hydrocarbon project are concerned, they belong to all citizens of Cyprus, both communities. Now, I wish I, I had uh, uh, answer to the question, what is our contingency if the United Nations uh, decides to withdraw? I think we will, I don't have it, um, and I'm not aware of anyone having a, a plan B. That's one more reason why we 
all need to support the United Nations uh, uh, and the Secretary General, uh, Special Representatives. And President uh, Barroso uh, recently uh, sent uh, a special envoy, which at this point of the time when the talks are being intensified, is being fully committed uh, uh, to the talks and is available to the uh, special representative uh, Alexander Donor uh, 24, on the 24-7 uh, basis. Let me also address uh, the issue of uh, the statements that Turkey is going to boycott the, uh, presid the Cyprus presidency of the European Council. I have been confronted with this statement uh, when I visited uh, Turkey uh, uh, soon after the elections, a couple of hours after the new government uh, being formed. And my imminent reaction was that instead of, of sending uh, this strange ultimatum, all efforts uh, need to be focused to find uh, 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 a comprehensive settlement before that, uh, uh, before that time. And this is exactly the angle I, which I understand uh, uh, has been used by the Foreign Minister Ahmed Davutoglu, speculating what is going to happen uh, if no settlement is being reached uh, uh, of the Cyprus issue. And let me not, you know, continue uh, 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 in his uh, steps and not speculate uh, 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 what, is going to, uh, what is going to happen. I think we need all of us to use uh, uh, the time between now and not end of June, the beginning of next year, to move the settlement talks forward, I respectively disagree with those who try to uh, say, yeah, we, we're talking for 30 years. Uh, 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 yeah, there has been a number of the faces. There has been a number of, of, of the efforts. We don't have anything better than the current one. And as far as the current one, uh, we're moving uh, uh, forward. And there is a, a, a progress. The Secretary General of the United Nations uh, uh, made it clear during the last meeting with both leaders. There is a commitment of these uh, uh, two leaders. There is kind of roadmap uh, uh, they both uh, uh, committed. So expectation is, is high. Now, I was talking about uh, uh, frustration. Uh, that frustration is uh, unfortunate and largely unnecessary. What we need now is constructive engagement. We do, we do not see any other option. Turkey and the European Union need each other more than ever to address jointly the challenges of the day. Turkey and the European Union are already closely linked by trade, investments, 50 years of association, and now accession negotiations. And there are real benefits to working uh, together with Turkey in our common neighboring countries. Most importantly, however, the European Union accession process in Turkey has proved a powerful instrument to foster reforms in this country. Turkey today is a more democratic country than it was 10 years ago, thanks to the European Union accession perspective. Even in reforms should be accelerated and broadened, they nevertheless continue, as demonstrated over the summer by significant steps such as the return of confiscated properties to the non-Muslim religious communities or strengthening of the civil and control over the military. And yes, I am aware of 
the increasingly troubling issue of the freedom of press. And I am concerned about the current legislation, particularly the anti-terrorist law, offering an ambiguity which is, which is unfortunately being used to put uh, a, a, a huge number of the journalists in unnecessary detention. But my approach is that we need to open the chapters and engage with Turkey and not close chapters. Let me remind this House that uh, as far as uh, uh, the accession process is concerned, we have only three chapters to open. Three chapters are available to us to open. The three chapters are rather difficult by its nature, by the substance. And if you looked at uh, the accession process of, uh, of some other countries, you will see that those chapters uh, which are available as far as the EU-Turkey relationship, they are being addressed only in a late stage of the accession process. The truth is that part uh, of these uh, chapters being frozen based on the Commission recommendation. Some of you mentioned Ankara uh, additional protocol, the Ankara agreement. But there are others who are being blocked unilaterally by member states and thus limiting uh, uh, the area of engagement. I don't want to speculate uh, uh, if we open the chapter on energy whether we will be you know, facing the situation like today. But I will address a different issue. If we open Chapter 23 on fundamental rights and judiciary, it would give us an opportunity to keep a finger on the Turkish reforms in the most important area, rule of law. It's a pity that uh, 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 this chapter is not available for the accession negotiation. Turkey and the European Union need to develop a renewed positive agenda, building on the achievements of the accession process and our joint interest, and a give a new momentum to our relations. This supposes renewed efforts in a number of key areas, including the support to political reforms in Turkey, the alignment with our AKI, addressing important trade issues, a closer cooperation on visa and migration, and a closer dialogue on foreign policy. Honorable members, I believe this is the only way forward. And I look forward to discussing these matters further with you in the coming months, starting in October, once the Commission has adopted its enlargement package. I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much indeed, Commissioner Fuller. Thank you to all of you uh, colleagues for your participation in the debate. Our uh, session is adjourned for today and uh, it will resume tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock when we will be talking about the uh, State of the Union with the uh, presence of uh, the uh, President of the Commission and the College of Commissioners. Have a good evening.